you can't figure out negotiations within sales, then you're always gonna leave these conversations feeling like you've been taken advantage of or that you're not standing up for yourself. You have to figure out how to approach a negotiation in a professional way where it's win-win and you walk away feeling like you got exactly what you deserve. Think about the last time that you had to negotiate something. Whether you're onboarding a new staff member and you say, here's the salary offer, and then they decide they're gonna counter. Oh gosh, have you ever tried to buy a car? Oh, it's, it's terrible. They play mind tricks on you, right? Great negotiators make you feel guilty. I, I hate that conflict. But here's what I've learned, having been in business for like well over a decade. When you approach negotiations, knowing that you have a point of view and there are certain things that have to happen to make it work for you, and they have a point of view, and there's certain things that have to happen to make it work for them. And somewhere in this, there's some overlap. It's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a great thing because it's about being professional. I have a point of view. I have certain things that I need to make this make sense for me. And you have the exact same thing. And I value your point of view and you value my point of view. And when you're thinking about it in this terms, I think it takes all the pressure off of thinking that you're somehow going to fight it out. You're going to duke it out. It's going to get nasty. Because really, if you're negotiating on something, this is a partnership, or this is a working relationship, or this is you trying to move into the home that you love. And you don't want people walking away from the table from someone you're going to work with, or someone who's going to be a client, or someone you're going to have a business relationship with. So the very best thing that you can do for yourself is respect your position understand who you are and your position. Just come to terms and don't feel guilty and don't feel worried and don't feel embarrassed about anything. Just come to terms with who you are, what you need and what you want. And if you can do that, then you can approach any conversation in kind of a black and white, this makes sense or this doesn't make sense point of view. It's know what you want, know who you are and what you think is acceptable. Of course, there's all of these detailed negotiation tactics. I think it makes people who should be working together adversarial rather than working with each other. It's a little inauthentic to be so adversarial fighting for the same thing and then a few days later come back together and be like suddenly we're all one big happy family on the same team. The way I approach it is how can we be one big happy family on the same team before the negotiation? or during the negotiation. So if you know that you're about to face any kind of negotiation, large or small, here's what you need to do. First, you need to be prepared. You need to be able to work through in your mind what you want and what you need, what is acceptable, how long the process is before you enter into this. Decide the framework, decide your approach. Maybe share that, maybe communicate that, maybe be really open with what your expectations are out of this negotiation. And any time that there's a tough negotiation where an arbitrator is brought in, that arbitrator usually sets ground rules for what is acceptable and what's not. Now, the next thing you need to do, you need to be able to understand leverage. Negotiations just come down to leverage. Who has it? Or one person has a certain type of leverage and the other person has a different type of leverage. In these negotiations, understanding the different nuances of leverage and who has it is really key. And then of course, with leverage, it comes, are you willing to walk away? And this is where most people fall into trouble with negotiations. They think that there's an opportunity in front of them and, and that is their one shot, right? I want to go out and buy that home. I fall in love with this home. I have to have that home. Guess what? If you don't buy that home, you're going to buy a different home. You're going to fall in love with a different home, right? Like, like walk away from the negotiation. There's nothing wrong with that right? They do not have leverage over you. Do not fall into the trap of buying something or signing something or entering into something that doesn't make sense because of time pressures or because you feel you have to do it or because this is my only one shot. You go to buy a, a car and they're going to make it seem like, like this is the only blue one on the lot. You better get it. It's like, listen, the last time I bought a car for my wife, I really pissed the people off. I was prepared. I set the groundworks. I figured out how to remove the leverage from me to have leverage over them. I went through and I found three different dealers across the entire province who had the exact car that I wanted. I emailed each of those dealers and I said, hey, I'm emailing three dealerships. I want this car. I'm trading in this vehicle. If you want to participate, send me your best price. And now they don't have any leverage over me because I've decided what I want. 
I've decided how I'm going to play this game. And there was still a little negotiation in there. The dealership called me up and said, hey, I can only get it down to this price. And I said, listen, I want your vehicle. I want the vehicle that you have and I will come in today and buy it off of you. They came down. I was happy. I went, I bought the vehicle. In small negotiations or big ones, these are the things that you need to do to get yourself into a better position. And then the last thing, and this is really key, is have empathy for their position. I need to arrive at a win-win in this situation. I spend time while I'm preparing, thinking about if I were them, what would they need to get out of this to make this work? So if you're buying a house, I mean, I've bought two houses and I've sold one. So I've been on both sides. And so I know that when I'm selling, I should be paid what it's worth because it's a, it's a representation of who I am. And so there's a lot of emotion tied in that. But I've also bought homes. And when I have bought homes, I have all my dreams of what the future could be tied into it. And I typically lowball and I typically come in lower and I try to be really rational but I also don't nitpick stuff. So when you're putting yourself in the position of the other person and you're understanding, like, you know, some people start high and other people start low and then you meet in the middle, or you can just say, listen, I've already done the math. You're gonna, you're gonna come in at this. I'm gonna come in at this. We're gonna go back and forth. Let's save all of the time. Let's save all the effort. Why don't we just start here? What if the person, you know, they start high, you start low, you end up in the middle, and then they take that as their starting point and then they negotiate even harder. Well, if you're prepared, and if you understand leverage and you've done all of these steps, you can just walk away because there's nothing wrong with walking away. Walking away isn't a loss. Walking away is a win. Forget it. There's other places I can go. Thank you very much. You just walk away. And so when you approach negotiations in your business with the people that you're hiring in your life and you come at it through a very kind of practical approach, removing the emotion, removing the, for me to win, you have to lose. What you will find is not only will negotiations be less scary for you, you're gonna have better business relationships, you're gonna close more deals, and people in general are just gonna like you a lot more. They're gonna like you because you're not coming in as a shark, you're coming in as a partner. And that ultimately is what business is about. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.